Okay, lastly, I wanna cover some excretion methods. I wanna talk about how our bodies handle the influx of microplastics and the chemicals associated with them, including BPA, BPS, phthalates, and the forever chemicals, the PFAS. So once these chemicals enter the body, whether it's through ingestion or inhalation or through skin contact, they are quickly absorbed and processed primarily by the liver. The liver is equipped with a variety of enzymes Part of these enzymes are called phase two detoxification enzymes. These are enzymes that convert these chemicals into more water soluble forms, making them easier for our body to excrete them mostly through urine. For example, BPA is cleared relatively fast within about six hours under normal conditions. Phthalates take a bit longer, ranging between 12 to 24 hours, depending on the specific compound. While that might sound reassuring, the problem is we are exposed to these chemicals almost constantly, so our bodies are in a near continuous state of processing them. But this is where it gets even more complicated. So PFAS, again, these are forever chemicals, do not break down easily. So unlike BPA or phthalates, the PFAS have a half-life of two to five years, meaning they accumulate in our organs like the liver and the kidneys and their persistence in the body makes them much harder to eliminate. They stick around and they build up over time. Then there's microplastics themselves. Microplastics do vary in size. Larger particles could pass through the gut and be excreted in feces, but the smaller nanoplastics, these are the really, really tiny particles, these are crossing biological barriers and they're entering the bloodstream. Once they get into circulation systemically, we don't really fully understand how or if they're ever excreted efficiently. What we do know is that they are accumulating in our organs, in our tissues, and this is a growing concern when we talk about long-term health implications. So how do we help our bodies clear out chemicals like BPA, BPS, and phthalates more efficiently? One promising strategy revolves around tapping into our body's natural detoxification systems. And we can do that through dietary and lifestyle interventions. One compound that really stands out here is sulforaphane. You've probably heard me talk about this before. It's a powerful molecule found in broccoli sprouts and other cruciferous vegetables. Sulforaphane activates a key pathway called NRF2. Think of NRF2 as a master regulator of detoxification. It controls the production of enzymes that helps our body clear out many, many toxins. It boosts the phase two detoxification enzymes. These are enzymes that bind to harmful chemicals and make them more water soluble so we can excrete them through our urine. Animal studies have shown that when rodents are exposed to BPA and given sulforaphane, their phase two detoxification enzymes go into overdrive and they experience less overall BPA related toxicity. Now, while there's not a lot of direct evidence on sulforaphane's ability to clear BPA and phthalates specifically, I think the mechanism here is very solid, and we do have compelling human data in other areas. For instance, studies show that sulforaphane can increase the excretion of toxins like benzene and acrolein, which we get exposed through through air pollution and food by up to 60%. So in my view, incorporating sulforaphane-rich foods into our diet, like broccoli sprouts, which contain up to 100 times more sulforaphane than mature broccoli, or considering a high-quality supplement of stabilized sulforaphane or its precursor, glucoraphanin, could be a viable strategy for helping detoxify BPA, BPS, and phthalates. And by doing so, we do boost our body's natural detoxification pathways that has been shown in human studies that could help us more effectively eliminate some of these microplastic associated chemicals. Another avenue worth exploring is the role of dietary fiber in helping our bodies eliminate chemicals associated with plastics and perhaps even some microplastics themselves. Consuming fiber-rich foods can bind to lipophilic chemicals like BPA and phthalates in the GI tract and reduce their absorption into the bloodstream, promoting their excretion via feces. So feces is another way our bodies detoxify BPA, 
phthalates, and even microplastics. Some animal studies support this mechanism, indicating that higher fiber intake leads to increased fecal excretion of these compounds. But what about microplastics themselves? While research is still emerging here, I think there's a reason to believe that dietary fiber could aid in the excretion of some larger microplastics. So since microplastics can be trapped within the gut lumen, a fiber-rich diet could potentially help encapsulate these particles and facilitate their removal through regular bowel movements. Essentially, fiber might help sweep the gut clean and reduce the resident's time of microplastics, therefore limiting their chances of causing harm and getting into the bloodstream. This means incorporating foods that are high in fiber, like legumes, fruits, vegetables, whole grains could serve a dual purpose. Not only do they provide essential nutrients and micronutrients and phytochemicals and fermentable fiber that supports overall health and gut health, but they also could enhance the elimination of both harmful chemicals and microplastic particles. Let's talk about another powerful tool for eliminating some of these microplastic associated chemicals, physical activity and practices that induce sweating. So exercise, things like sauna, hot tubs, even hot yoga. Sweat, it's not just about cooling down the body, it's also a way to eliminate harmful chemicals and compounds from the body. So sweat does can trace trace amounts of BPA and phthalate metabolites. Now, while most of these chemicals are excreted through urine, Studies have shown that sweat can help too. One study published in the Journal of Environmental and Public Health found measurable levels of phthalates in sweat of participants. I think this tells us that regular sweating, whether through exercise or sauna or hot yoga, can be a viable route for excreting some of these harmful substances. So while the amounts of BPA and BPS and phthalates that are excreted in sweat are smaller compared to urine, I think consistent sweating could really still play a meaningful role in lightening the toxic burden load on our body. And lastly, I do wanna make one last mention that these excretion strategies that we've been discussing are less effective for the forever chemicals, the PFAS, because of their resistance to metabolic breakdown, because their half-life in the body is two to five years. So really the best way to avoid PFAS is to avoid the exposure in the first place and reducing our exposure to plastics does remain the most effective way to reducing our burden of PFAS chemicals. So this means avoiding plastic chemicals, avoiding mineral waters with high concentrations of PFAS, and really just trying hard to reduce our use of plastics.